Okay, when dealing with stoichiometry, we've already kind of dealt with in excess. Um, if the reactant is in excess, then it means it will not affect how much product you can make. However, the converse of that is going to be there will always be one limiting reactant, meaning this reactant controls how much product can be made because this reactant will be used up first. So, to determine your limiting reactant, you need your balanced equation, and you need to know how much moles of each reactant you have available. An example of this, if we are doing the synthesis of aluminum and iodide to make aluminum iodide, a um, couple examples. This one, if I have 1.2 moles of aluminum and 2.4 moles of I2, which is my limiting reactant, we're already in moles, so we're just going to use the numbers that we have. And once we have things in moles, you divide your moles by the molar amounts used in the equation. All right, those are your prefixes in your balanced equation. All right, so 2 moles of aluminum divided by the 2 moles or sorry, 1.2 moles of aluminum divided by the 2 moles required by the reaction gives you 0.6 ratio, and then the 2.4 moles of I2 divided by the 3 moles used up by the reaction gives you 0.8, which means you have, in a ratio, more iodine than aluminum, which is going to make aluminum your limiting reactant. Okay? Because if those two numbers were equal to each other, 0 0.6 and 0 0.6, then we would use it both completely. But in this case, we're going to have you know 0.2 moles of iodine left over. Okay. So another example is say instead of having the information given to you in moles, it's given to you in grams, which is honestly more what you'll run into, because we don't have scales that measure in moles. These first step is to convert everything to moles. All right, dimensional analysis comes in handy. Conversion to moles always involves okay, your molar mass from the periodic table. All right, so in this case, 1.2 divided by the molar mass of aluminum gives you 0.044 moles of aluminum. And we have 2.4 grams of I2, but the molar mass of I2 actually needs to be twice what's on the periodic table. So it'd be 253.801 grams. And that should say I2. And there we get 0 0.0095. So whichever one is smaller. So now that we have moles, we have to divide our moles present by the moles required by the reaction. Okay? So we have 0.04 moles of aluminum divided by the ratio of two moles that it's going to use in the reaction. And then same thing, you do the iodine divided by the 3 moles of iodine that are used by the reaction, and you have a comparison of 0.022 moles of aluminum available for use to 0.0032 moles of iodine. The smaller number tells you your limiting reactant. Iodine is your limiting reactant. Okay. So, limiting reactants, you need to know moles, and then you also have to know what ratio it's going to be used by. All right, so... That's great if I had, you know, twice as many moles of iodine, but I have to use a ratio of 3 to 2 for aluminum, so that may actually make iodine my limiting reactant. Another thing um, dealing with stoichiometry that we'll run into, especially in a lab setting, is calculating your percent yield. Okay? So, you know... In any lab, you have a final product, and it doesn't always necessarily match what you expect it to. All the calculations that we do with these limiting reactants and stoichiometry and finding out how many grams we're supposed to make um, are done assuming ideal conditions. So, fortunately, in real life, ideal conditions are rarely ever happening. You can have impure reactants. You can have reactions that, for some reason, just don't complete. Um, you can have smaller side reactions that start to use up some of your reactants, therefore not making the right products. Um, according to some <coughs> laboratories, getting about 60% of your expected product is actually pretty good. If you can get higher than that, that's even better. All right? But percent yield is the percentage of the expected yield you actually receive. All right, so you have to know what you expect to receive, and then you also need to know what you actually get. Example of this, what is the percent yield 
uh, the, the following reaction. If 16.0 grams of calcium carbonate is decomposed into 15 grams of calcium oxide and carbon dioxide gas. So to get percent yield, you're going to have to find U stoichiometry to figure out how much you expect to make. All right. And you also need to know your 60 grams that you actually do, or sorry, 15 grams that you actually do receive. So you need to write your formula, you need to find your theoretical yield, and then you take your actual yield and divide by that theoretical yield and multiply by 100. The formula for calcium carbonate would be CaCO3, and it yields calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. Okay. You're looking at the formula, we have one calcium, one calcium, one carbon, one carbon, three oxygen, three oxygens, so that's already balanced. Okay. Plug in your information. Okay. Dimensional analysis really comes in handy, and I expect to see this for work on tests and quizzes. So we have 60 grams of calcium carbonate. We need to convert that to moles, so we divide by the molar mass of calcium carbonate. Okay. So that's going to cancel things out here. And then from there, we actually need to convert from moles of calcium carbonate to how many moles of calcium oxide we're going to get out. All right, and that's where you put your molar ratio in. All right, and then once we have it in moles of calcium oxide, we have to convert that to grams using the molar mass of calcium oxide. All right, so in the end, we make 33.6 grams of calcium oxide. Three sig figs for three sig figs. All right. And then finally, you divide your actual yield by the theoretical yield and multiply by 100 like 15.0 divided by 33.60 and gives you a 44.6% yield. Okay, so please do the online quiz and we will work with this more in class.